Welcome back. My name is Patricia Regeer with Regeer Educational Services. And today we are talking about round 25 quick tips when you are facilitating breakout rooms. These are things to keep in mind, to, tips to, you know, what, how to set yourself up and your participants for the best success and some best practices, as well as some things to look out for if you're taking care of the tech. But the this is going to be a rapid fire of some great things to keep in mind. Now, there are some pros and cons for how you're setting up the settings themselves before opening the room. So I'm going to cover that as well. But let's start with some best practices. First of all, it's important that people understand the navigation. If they are going to have to click join, if they're going to have to leave, if they're going from room to room to turn on their mic and camera, all of those details, having navigation slides really do help. Even if you're assuming that people have been on Zoom a lot this past year or more, there may just be one person that doesn't know how to do this, but you might be surprised that there are more people that have not had to know all of these details. So cover the navigation um, and be very clear on the instructions before people go into breakout rooms. Often it's great to share a slide. You can have a whiteboard, whatever it is that you write out the instructions for people that they're not hearing it just in an auditory way. You can type it in the chat, but visually seeing it and then invite people to take a picture of that slide, the instructions, what's the question they're uh, going to be working on, that they need to have a recorder and tell you who that is, the, the person to report back, maybe an observer, depending on the, if you're doing role playing, whatever the activity is, you need to be very clear on the details because People can ask for help, but you don't want to be jumping to a lot of rooms if you don't have to. This will save time. Even that discussion of people asking each other, what were we supposed to do again? So be clear on the instructions and share that ahead of time. Invite people to take a picture so they have it ready with them. Or if you have them in a participant guide that they have printed out ahead of time or have it on a second device with them. Tell people to um, and invite them to turn on their camera, turn on their mic. Best practices in a breakout room is to participate. People really have the best learning experiences when breakouts are included and they participate. It is a very enriching learning experience and it's a lot more fun and it breaks up the learning day or event. It's not fun when someone is sitting there without their camera on, without their mic on, and you don't know if they're really there or not. They're listening in, not so fun. But in a breakout room, if you're typing in the chat and communicating that way, if all of a sudden your camera mic's not working, but you can hear or you're calling in um, and you're not able to talk right then, you're really just auditing um, the experience, you can type in the chat and the chat is only in that breakout room. It doesn't follow you. It's not in the other rooms and it's not in the main room. So to know that as well. So instructions, and you can also broadcast a message throughout that breakout room that there's two minutes to wrap up or you're halfway through, time to switch partners, whatever that is. So look out for those messages. They're quick, they're small, in your room, you can find your mic, your uh, camera, if you're able to share screen um, and you're sharing a whiteboard and then saving that, more on that in a moment. Also, the name of the breakout room, make note of that and how much time you have left if they've turned that on as well. So there's a button to click help. There is a button to leave. Um, you can leave room. Um, or the whole meeting, but definitely be clear on what you're, you're picking and navigating there as well. So as a host with settings, if you have clicked on advanced sharing options where multiple participants can share simultaneously, that's important if you want people to share their whiteboard and take notes like a flip chart paper, or maybe you have that on an exterior uh, website where you're able to collect all of that data. 
again, make sure people have the links that they know how to share a whiteboard. They, they have to save it if they don't click save and it's saved on their computer. So then they have to be able to know where to find it and how to share it back with you. If you'd like more details and tutorials about those questions, let me know. But I will also link other more in-depth tutorials. These are important pieces and it gives you so much more versatility. If you are sending people to their different parts of the room and flip chart paper, you can bring some of those experiences online too. People just need to know how to get to their room, how to get the information back to you as well. When you come back from the breakout rooms, make sure you share who uh, took notes, maybe manually, and they're going to send them to the, to the um, speaker or the facilitator name and email um, make sure you communicate that in chat after you come back so that the facilitator can collect that information and if you're the facilitator make sure you ask for that you might need to prompt a couple times as well if you have a longer session and your breakouts are for a longer time you have less people in the breakouts but they're randomized you might want to also write down who's in what room because if someone drops off um, and is coming back, especially if those groups are following multiple sessions, you want to write them down if you've had them randomized and they haven't been manually put together um, ahead of time. Now, if you have a large group and um, I'll go through some of the, the tips for randomized or manual and automated pros and cons and what you want to do about that. So with a large group, over 50 people, maybe over 100 people, and you're putting them into maybe, I would recommend no more than 49 groups, your max is 50. You click the, if there are pairs or three people or four people, whatever the number is that you wanna put into the rooms, I recommend that you only go to 49 because if you're going to do randomized, and if you're going to click automatically push people into their own rooms, because that is the easiest for your participants, make sure that your speakers know how to leave a breakout room and come back. And I'll get into if that's not the way you want to do it, the other um, flip side. So the reason why I do 49 rooms, set them all up then I add another room before I open them in the background I'm setting this all up then I find my co-hosts or speakers and facilitators the people that don't want to be in the rooms with all the rest of the participants and I move them into that extra room I rename it as green room backstage whatever it want, needs to be and then I re-look at does anyone else need to move around because I've moved a few people out of rooms it sounds complicated that's where having a co-host, co-facilitator, producer helps with all of that tech in the background um, because there is a lot going on while you're focusing on explaining instructions or going over content. So that is one way to do it is to add an extra room and put those people there. They need to know how to leave and come back. Another way to do it, if you're doing randomized, is to not click the automatic and then your participants need to know how to click join to come into the room and leave when they come back so that you take that into account for navigation slides and details that you're explaining to them you can explain less if you're teaching your co-hosts and facilitators and speakers how to leave a room and come back to the main room so there's two couple ways to go about that as well. You can also, you might be setting up manual. You might also click automate, automatic. If you're doing manual, if you have a smaller group, then you just don't add your um, co-hosts and facilitators and speakers because you have a smaller group, you're manually setting them up into rooms and you just don't pick them to put in a room. Um, so then you can still click automated because you've done manual and your co-hosts don't get pulled into rooms. So a few things to consider when you're making choices for your learning experience plan um, for breakouts as to how you want participants to get there or your 
facilitators, what do you need to communicate, uh, what's the ease for them, and, uh, and when you do set that all up and have that all ready to go, what happens sometimes is people leave. Now, I said before, breakouts really do impact the learning experience in a positive way. Such high praise from people when they go into the breakouts and they really, it adds value. But there's always people that are scared, that are shy, they, maybe their internet cut out or something happened. But recently I was with a larger group over 100 people and all of a sudden 17 people dropped off just as the speaker was starting to talk about breakout rooms are next and people left um and so there are some people that don't like to participate in that way they'd rather passively be sitting back that doesn't necessarily help their learning sometimes it's putting it into practice whether it's a role play or discussion communication practice talking about what you were just learning it's really worth it but something to note is there are always the people that drop off sometimes it's just a couple people with a larger group it might be more so if you have just paired up everybody into twos or groups of three or whatever it is you might have a bunch of people that are by themselves so very quickly if you've done all that setup especially if it was either manual or randomized and you've pulled out the speakers you might need to very quickly be moving some other people into rooms so no one's by themselves so that's something that you definitely want to look out for and quickly be compensating it does take a couple minutes if it's a very large group but just be prepared um, to not just keep doing your thing for the 10 minutes and someone's by themselves in a breakout room and they don't know what's going on. They might know how to click help because you covered that. They might know how to leave and come back to the main room and let you know, but don't assume that and you don't want to leave people um, out in the cold on their own and you want to right away be correcting that situation. So that's something to work, watch out for and that is how you can fix that. Make sure you recommend that everybody gets a chance to talk and that they know the navigation of um, everything, especially too if they're on a phone. And I'll link that video here too, so you can send that to people for how to navigate all of those icons you've just described, how they do that on their phone, how to add um, documents into chat, some of the additional videos, if you'd like me to share that too. So broadcast that message, two minutes to wrap up, that you're bringing them back soon. And those are your quick tips for breakout rooms, uh, what things to consider when you're planning, what things to pre prepare for um, as a host and facilitator, and some best practices as well. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Patricia Regeer. And until next time, I hope you have a life of learning moment and that you're able to facilitate engaging experiences for your participants. Thanks for tuning in.